We're happy that you're here. We're happy you're here sharing this joy with us. And we love you. Thank you, Jeff. We, we really do. We do. It's um, this community has the way this the people have kind of come together just it sort of inspires all of us to to get back together again because people are really nice and people are and um and supportive of each other and i want to encourage you to kind of connect with this community you'll find other people who are are really encouraging of the things that you really want to bring out in yourself and um so we're much 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 more powerful and effective and happy together so come play with us. It would be good. And now let's take a look at, at how this sort of idea of, of, uh, of, of post hoc composition. So um, the, the, the idea for this is that you're out there, you're watching a hawk. And then, ooh, look at that hawk. And you get some notes down in your journal. And then the hawk flies away. And you look down at your journal page, and there's all these little sort of scraps and bits and pieces of stuff all over the place. And you're thinking like, huh, that doesn't really kind of, you know, I've seen other people have these sort of cohesive nature journal pages. It looks like they scan them ahead. Some people do. And that works really well for them. It's like some people, before they make a nature journal page, they'll say like, I'm going to kind of, uh, you know, create this, you know, block this out, sometimes even using golden means and things. And I'm going to put a title here. And, and they plan it out in advance. And that's really, really cool. Um, I'm usually not that organized because I just like scroll and then I start putting squirrel stuff down and then I get all the squirrel stuff on my page. But then sometimes the pages look like there was like this intentionality, this, this overall plan. And, but what today what I want to do is show you how I do that. And then there are two interesting reasons about why. And, um, and maybe we'll start with those. Um, so I'm going to bounce over to the thrill cam in just a moment. Let's go there now. Whoop. There's the thrill cam. And I'm going to go to, oh, all right, I'm already on the right. Um, so let me, let me show you a few nature journal pages. Here's a nature journal, which, which got some of this treatment. Um, Hold on a second. Um, there we are. All right. So there's a little bit of this uh, business going on on here. Here's a page with some, uh, you know, there's stuff about white crowned sparrows and it's singing a little song here. Here's some by the wind sailor um, love happening down here. Um, and because there are these two different sections, it kind of feels like there's a little bit of planning there. Um, here is here is a there's this weird thing that I found. I, I got to show you guys the thing. Here is the thing. Found this on a beach. This little part broke off of it. it was attached here. So found this thing on a beach. And at a micro level, I don't know if we can focus. No, we can't really see it. There are this 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 surface is covered with all these little plates that are on the outside, and it's on both sides. And so far, everybody that I've talked to, nobody really has a clue what this is. And it's this strange thing. I even had a hard time figuring out initially. Is this an organic thing or is this a synthetic thing? And I believe this is an organic thing. There's some sort of inner kind of crust. So there's my mystery, the thing. There's the thing. And, but it, but it kind of looks, it's sort of, you know, pulled together. Like there's, there's some planning and putting this nature journal page together. Let's see if this can go up a little bit higher. Oop. All right. Um, the let me see um here is here is a, a a nature journal page um about this um this uh sour grass and you know it, it looks like there's some 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 structure some some meta thinking about what is going on there um, and let's go for one other example. Um, 
where do I have? Oh yeah, um, then down here, uh, we're looking at, um, here's a goose with a little collar on it uh, near Cordova, Alaska. And, and sort of, it's easy to kind of read this page. Um, here's a page that is, uh, it's easy to kind of sort of see what things are related onto each other. And that feels kind of like planning. But these pages actually started with this big kind of chaos period. So what I want to do is sort of show you how this happens. Um, and then what I'm going to do is we're going, we're going to take a few Nature Journal pages and and do this 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 sort of post hoc process on it, and we'll turn it into a page with where there's just sort of you know on this page there's a lot of stuff, right? So, and you know like over here's a bald eagle, here's some some plants, um, here's some birds and stuff, and um, there's basically all, a lot most of my real estate is is taken up but as you look at it you do kind of get the sense like this was this sort of haphazard jumble experience where all these little things came together uh, we're going to take a page like this and we're going to kind of give it the treatment and um you're going to see that that makes the page easier to read it makes the page more physically interesting and easy to understand. And the third thing that it's going to do is it's going to help me remember these events and these observations more clearly. Um, and the reason that I'm saying it's going to help me kind of remember more, I'm now going to bounce back to different speaker. I'm going to go check out, um, here is a slide from my friend uh, Ebbinghaus, Herman Ebbinghaus. Um, and we've talked a little bit about this before. I think this is this really interesting idea. Ebbinghaus was a researcher who was studying memory by looking at the way that people forget. And what Ebbinghaus, uh, Ebbinghaus's discovery was that is really, really powerful and interesting is that when we learn something, when we first learn something, we're gonna call at the end of that class, that point where we are 100%. Very quickly, the amount of information that is retained in our brain crashes from 100% down to um about you know 30 percent here within the first hour <laughs> you're down here right and by the end of the first day you are less than 20 percent and it then kind of flattens out there so these lines kind of come they you crash and then you flatten out and so you go through all the work of learning something and <laughs> you just lose it this isn't something that just happens to you. This is happens to all of us. So here's what Ebbinghaus discovered is that if you then review what you did within the first hour, you kick your learning back, your memory retention back up to 100. But then as you are forgetting things, this curve flattens out at a different point where now you're maybe 35 percent and if you review that and that that is if you did nothing else right you just within the last hour you review your notes you're going to kick your memory up from about 15 to about 35 percent that's a huge difference but he also found that if you review that material at the end of the day right then you're going to flatten out somewhere around 65%. Whoa. And if you review that 
within at, at the end of about a, a week, then it flattens out at a much higher rate. And so what I'm saying there is that through these sort of periodic refreshers with stuff, you get your brain to, your brain needs the signal of repetition with effort to help you learn. And this gives your brain that signal. So what Ebbinghaus is doing is saying, don't learn something and then not touch it again. Learn something, review it, review it, review it. And then you've got it assimilated into your brain. And then it's not, you're going to kind of keep it at a high level. So these little periods of revisiting stuff that you've already studied and done are really, really helpful. Really, really helpful. So here is, um, so when we are doing this, what I call post hoc composition, it is an Ebbinghaus review of what you're done. And you're also going to be a maker in that moment. So you're using, um, by, by adding stuff onto the page of your journal, when you do that review, um, we're, going, we're going to involve the, the production effect, which is another thing that improves our, our memory to get us to kind of retain more of what's going on. So this is um, a, this is a, we're going to be doing a little Ebbinghaus review of what we were doing. Now, hold on a second. Walking across the room, getting a little notebook here. Got my little notebook here. And I'm going to change the microphone back. So we'll come back to that page in a minute. And here is, here's how I think about this. There we are. Some little waterfalls there. So let's say you have a, here's your nature journal page. And you walk out there and you say like, oh, whoa, check out, there's a what's it over there. And so you make a little sketch of the what's it. There's a little sketch of the what's it. And then the what's it moves. And so you you do another little sketch of the what's it. And then and then it turns, no, it's part, then you get it and there's another little sketch of the what's it. And then, um, the what's it kind of turns sideways to you and maybe you you kind of get a little bit more of the kind of a little study of you know part of that what's it um and and then the what's it leaves and you're thinking wow that was so cool and so i'm going to make some little notes about the what's it over here and um and then i can kind of annotate this thing and you know as I am making in those additional notes, I'm getting my brain just to kind of engage with the what's it a little bit more. And then I walk down the trail and like, ooh, there's a who's it. And and so I I start making little notes about the 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 the, the who's it that's over there. And there's a little who's it sketch and and the but I can't really kind of get the details of the flowers on those that who's it. So I'm gonna do kind of an enlargement of that over here. And um, and and maybe make some notes about it. But I get one of these pages where there's just sort of a jumble of stuff on the page. And again, that's usually my MO in the field. I am so busy kind of collecting stuff that um, that I get sort of a journal page and there's just like a whole bunch of, whoop, back up um whip. right so like here's a good example of here's a jumble of stuff oh it's a butterfly look it's a columbus monkey oh it's a giraffe right and all this stuff is here right and so it's hard to kind of it's hard to sort of read it's not it's it, it's not doesn't really feel cohesive so so what i can do is I can, here's my who's it's and what's it's. Um, what I can do is I can chunk information in this page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, that 
this stuff here is all a unit. And I'm going to draw a little frame around that. Right? What that does, oh, let's zoom down on that. What that little frame, and notice on this part of the frame here, I'm breaking out of the frame. This is sort of breaking the box. If you've got an object, a couple of objects, it's okay to put some of them in the frame, but, but let one of them at least break the edges of that frame, and it will just visually be a lot more fun. Why do this? It's just fun. So what that does is it says this is a chunk. And let's say I have, I'm going to kind of put in a few more kind of notes about the, the, the who's its, you know, head here. And maybe here's another little who's its head. Um, I can also chunk this stuff together. I can chunk this stuff together. And so what I might do is say, where did I put that? Oh, here it is. Um, so I can chunk things by putting a box around them. Another way I can chunk things is by, let's say I've got, I'll show you some other ways of chunking things. Here's, here's some objects. And if I want to chunk those together, what I can do is just take a little bit of tone and have that touch them. And so that visually connects those things, right? Now, when somebody sees this, they kind of like, oh, those are a group. That's, that's a unit up there. So for instance, let's say I had this whole part here um, with um all this 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 stuff here with my my who's it heads and i want people to think of that as 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 a unit watercolor ends up working really really well for chunking things because you can go over um pen lines that are not um uh, water soluble so don't put watercolor on top of water soluble pen but it goes over pencil and all these sort of things. And if you did that with, with colored pencil, if you had a lot of writing and you went over that with colored pencil to try to make tone, then it can kind of smudge things. But, um, but I've just chunked all these things together. So now there's who's it heads and some other who's it nuts notes. The, the what's it's are down here as a block. And, um, I'm going to add some more. Uh, no, that's good. And so what I've got is on this page, this part here is now visually unified. And as people look at it, they kind of go like, oh, this is, the, here's this little moment. This is all related information. This is all related information. And what I can also do then is I can add a little subtitle in here. This is a what's it. And this is a who's it. Right? So then as people look at this, they go like, oh, who's it's and what's it's. I now totally understand. I can look at this page and immediately grok what is going on here. In addition to these titles, I can put in subtitles. So if these were like little, um, you know, if, if these were little notes about as the what's it was going around, um, you know, feeding, you know, the little feeding postures of the what's it's or, and this is maybe a couple of little what's it's feeding before. I'm going to, then I could put a little subtitle here writing feeding postures. And I can put in a subtitle here. Um, structure. And now people look at this and they go like, oh, this is who's it structure and feeding um, postures. I can, I can quickly understand what I'm doing. So part of that's for the other person who's looking at this page. 
but it's equally for you. It's equally for you because now you look at your page and you can, can go like, oh, I've now, I've sort of taken all these disparate things that I had and I've unified them into, um, into kind of more of a kind of cohesive story. Right. Uh, this is I was studying who's it's today and I studied their structure and their feeding posture that by doing that, that for you is an ebbing Haas review. You've just ebbing Haas. Oh, that's cool. So I'm going to go to a little journal uh, uh, page here. And let's see. So 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 tools that I've I've, I've got. So tools. Here's one. Let's kind of get meta on this, right? Here's one tool. It's a title. Another tool that I have is a subtitle. Um, I can use the tone chunker. I can use a broken box. If, if these ones here were eating these, if the who's it's were eating what's it's, all right, um, then I could draw a little arrow down to this. I have a little what's it in here, and I can draw kind of a little arrow saying that these are these. So there's some little what's it's that are around here. Um, and so what I'm doing is let's write this in. This is metacognition. This is thinking about what I'm thinking about. And I'm doing that all on the page. And it goes from this jumble of stuff to I'm really thinking it, about it and analyzing it. My brain is linking stuff together. What are the chunks? What are the connections between those chunks? How are things connected? How are things separated? The other thing that I will do when I'm doing this is if I make a particularly interesting discovery, I can go like, wow, this is really important. I can put a little star next to something. Um, so ways of sort of showing emphasis, you can put a star next to something because we often think of stars as like, ooh, look at this. Another thing I can do is I can put in a little exclamation point. Um, I love how Akshay puts in little googly eyes, kind of looking at whatever thing is interesting. So what you're trying to do is just sort of say, like, this is particularly cool. Similarly, if there's a question that I ask that is particularly rich and interesting, then I can give it a big question mark. Um, Fiona loves to, um, with her kind of question marks, she will then color code them. So if she writes a question and it's about the who's it, um, whatever color I was using is sort of the prominent color in who's it, um, she'll then color in that question mark that then visually ties, let's say there's like a yellow bird here that she was studying, she would do that question mark yellow. And so it visually associates that question with whatever you're looking at. This is all metacognition. So it gets you to do an Ebbinghaus review. You're thinking about your stuff again. You are organizing things that are already on the page without having to move them around. You are separating some things and unifying others. Let's take a look at a real nature journal page and see how this kind of post hoc thing happens. Oh, one other thing. If you want to, uh, there's one thing that I would keep in mind as I'm putting stuff down on my page. And that is 
let some of the things that you put on your page be small units. Some mid-size and then a little bit of big so that there is so what your your units are that you end up with some things are big some things are middle sized and some things are small also let the distances between objects vary so leave some spaces blank on your page leave some open breathing room leave have some places where you um you know some things are kind of further out on their own so if some of the things on your pages are big some are small some are medium sized and you've got a variety of spaces you will be able to create awesome compositions off of this you still can even if you don't do this if you don't have this kind of structure but it is going to be a little bit harder more difficult if everything on your nature journal page is all the same size and the same distance that gets a little bit more difficult so just as you're kind of on the fly in the field if you just say to yourself every once in a while do something larger do something smaller leave some open room sometimes if you have a hard time leaving any open space every once in a while just on your page just sort of circle an area lightly and just remind yourself that that's something that you're going to leave blank there's a little no fly zone so you want these sort of areas of breathing room either for kind of visual space on your page or for you to write in more notes now let's do this real time with some nature journaling pages all right here is um, some notes about a plant and stuff as I was doing it let's zoom back so here's some notes about a plant how do I do kind of get myself to be ebbing Haas on this um while this I did this the other day with a, a group of kids and we were looking at these sour grass plants um and I want to um, get myself to remember more about this. Um, here's how I can go about that. I'm going to start by just kind of modifying the, the, the notes and my thinking on it. So look at these sort of different levels of kind of Ebbinghaus style geeking out that I can do on this. So I'm going to look at it, and I've got one question here, but there's not a lot of questions on here. Huh. I do have words, pictures, and numbers, and I don't see any it reminds me of. So I've got I notices, I've got one I wonder. Well, that's interesting. I'm, I, I'm now aware, because I put stuff down, that I only asked one question, what are these purple spots? And I'm going to say to myself, looking at what I was doing, um, you know, that... Are, are there are there things that I noticed that I was kind of curious about in the moment that I never really kind of officially geeked out with? Well, there are these sort of strange little swollen bases of things, and they had these joints on them. Um, so what is up? I don't like that pen. Where is my, give me a little ballpoint pen. I want a little ballpoint pen. I'm going to come over here and get myself a ballpoint pen one moment. There's my little ballpoint pen. Um, so what is up with the, uh, I'm going to call it joint base. With the joint base, this, this sort of the stem comes down and broad base um, breaks here. 
easily. And so there's the, let me kind of show you how this was, was structured. And as I do that, I'm going to throw a little bit of color down on the page. So I had these, um, these stems that are coming down. Let's make the zoom in. All right, so these things are, these stems come down. And here are these stems coming down. And as they would come down, they would get wider towards the bottom and they would turn white. And so the bottom would have these sort of pale kind of white bases. So I'm going to put a little bit of, this is toned paper, so I'm throwing some gouache on here. And then there was this kind of jointed, angled section that kind of came off like this. So these parts were white. And isn't that odd? And so that structure, that weird structure was not something that I see on many plants. So then now here's a question. So they've got these little jointed bases. Is this so that if something pulls them, it's going to break off there, leaving this part underground? Like, so if let's say that an herbivore or a you know fifth grader wanted to pick it, um, is this a sort of herbivory defense? So I'm going to write, um, is this to leave roots in, roots in ground when picked or eaten. And I think that that, see, that was not a question that I in, intentionally asked before, but kind of going back to this, I can get a little bit more out of this. And I actually think that that is kind of an interesting little moment there. So I'm going to throw in a question mark there. And um, why not make that question mark the same color as the grass? So I'm going to give it a white base and a green top. Huh. That, that makes me want to kind of take a closer look at how these little bases are connected to the taproot. We did, I did see that it had a taproot. When I was making this little quick kind of habit sketch, it was showing that there were, um, uh, that the leaves, the leaves were all down here, right? So I had leaves that were all down here. And they all I'm gonna draw in a few. And then there were these little stalks that came up, and those had the flowers on them. And the flowers were yellow. So I am going to put in some yellow flowers. Um, when I was making this little diagram of how um, all the, the leaves kind of came in below the level of these flowers, so the flowers were up at four decimeters high. I love decimeters. Um, these, uh, the leaves were around two decimeters high. When I was making that diagram, I wasn't really focused on this thing that I'm now more curious about. And so I'm going to draw a little line to this and just make a little note to myself. I'm going to give myself a little to-do box here. 
and I've checked that little box off at some point in the future when I uh, get an answer to this or, or do this. And I say, go back, back, and look at um, connection of leaf and flower to roots. I don't have a good kind of understanding of, of this part here, right? And <clears throat> so this part down here, I'm going to, this is mostly green in here. So I've just got myself a green colored pencil. I am going to draw a circle around here. I'm going to break that where it hits the words. And then I'm going to draw a little arrow over to where that goes. And what that does is it sort of visually shows that this business is all connected and it goes over there. I'm gonna make this show up a little bit more. I could put colored pencil into this or I can use watercolor. I'm gonna here use watercolor because that watercolor um, the nice thing about the watercolor, or here I'm using some gouache, it uh, it's going to sort of play nicely with kind of going over some of these other forms. And I don't even have to fill in the entire ball. I just want this to kind of fade out here. And there we go. So that's saying this whole business whoop, goes right in there. But you see how visually now, what I did is I just sort of had a bunch of questions about the base. I thought a little bit more about this base. I drew a circle around it and I connected it to something else. This is an example of the sort of post hoc geeking out. And um, if I want to, I can also, uh, I'm gonna sharpen my pencil in the background here, hold on. Um, I'm going to put in a little subtitle here, Roots, um, or what are these? Um, know, maybe it's the, you know, jointed base. So I'm going to write joints. J-O-I-N-T-S. So now I look at this and I go like, oh, this whole thing is, there's something going on with the joints here. A little bit hard to see on your screen, but. So this is this is an example of kind of getting metacognitive with something. I'm thinking a little bit more about it. I'm looking back at these notes that I took and just giving them a little bit more love. I often am not kind of adding in that many more details unless there's I remember there's some sort of sometimes there's a detail that I I um that I that I made uh that I noticed but I didn't get that down you know for instance that this the the root here oh the, I wrote that it was a tan root so that's okay I got that but this now looks like this whole business was planned where really I had just a few of these little sketches of a little bit of this base stuff that was down here, but I've now really fleshed that out more. Um, let's see what happens if I play a little bit with this upper part of the page. Um, so I have I have these yellow petals. So I'm putting a little bit of gouache down. And um, it's really fun to put gouache on toned paper. So I'm just getting to do this. 
And I'm not going to, I don't have to fill in the entire drawing. It actually is visually sometimes more interesting if you leave some things just line art or it's the start of your kind of working out with something. Um, and And that's not really the color that it was. This is a little bit too, too bright yellow. So I'm going to take a little bit of white gouache and just sort of add it into these. So I've got a little gouache, a little mini gouache palette here. And what I'm doing is just wiping some, getting some gouache white in there. Get a little bit more gouache white. Throw that in there. And I let that dry. Where I put my hand in my paint and made these little yellow spots all over the page. Oh, that's okay. Um, let's see what happens if I start, you know, thinking about thinking about this. And get rid of those white spots. Ah, gouache comes off the page really, really easily. Um, there was a little orange. I have a little note there about that orange pistol. And what else can I can I say about these? Um, the uh, the lines in here at the base of the pedal those were green, and I didn't notice that. I didn't write that down, but I'm going to add that in. I'm going to say green. Um, and then I'm going to think like, does green show up well for insects? Um, are the green lines, green lines, nectar guides? And if so, why green? Silence your telephone. You are a telemarketer. <laughs> now it's turned off. Sorry about that, everybody. So I, I I just put myself a question here and did kind of one of those, gave it a little Fiona uh, daisy chain link here. Um, so why are the green uh, why, um, are the green lines on the base of this pedal here um, nectar guides, and why green? And then I'm thinking, you know, with their why green. Um, like I don't think that green shows up in UV spectrum. Um, so I'm gonna say, uh, you know, hard to see in UV. And why not make the word UV kind of purple? Um, ultraviolet. Um, so I'm just noticing where I where I don't where do I not have where do I not have questions? Are there questions that I could then ask? Um, and I think this is a legit question. I like this question that I just came up with, but that question didn't occur to me when I was first out there. It came to me when I was doing this sort of post hoc ebbing hossing. Right? Um, and so all of this is stuff about the flowers. All right. Um, so, and the flowers are yellow. So I'm going to grab a yellow um colored pencil and i'm going to put a yellow box around this business and as i'm doing this what i'm going to do is now i'm now thinking about the sizes of things 
and I want to get a shape that is a different size than a lot of the other stuff that I have on the page. There it is. So here is, I put down this little yellow box. It's not really intrusive, but it um, unifies um, all the flower. So I've got my little roots, the joint section, I've got my flowers. And so I put a little subtitle on that. So it doesn't really, you know, jump out here because of the color of the page, but I'm, I actually kind of like that. I, I like that little, why don't I Oh, now I'm kind of getting a little bit carried away here. Just erased where it said flowers because my gouache ate it. But I'm making this box a little bit yellow. Why? Because there's yellow in the flowers. And then as this comes over here, I don't want that yellow to actually get to the flower. So I'm going to wipe out some of the paint on here so that as I come in here, we're going to fade. Ah, oh, that's kind of fun. I might have to rewrite my word flowers down in a different color, right? Um, maybe it has to be green now. All right. I'm going to let that dry and put it in there. Um, the, and then, um, so there's this, this one little bit here about flowers. I like this kind of UV thing has kind of got some emphasis because that's a cool question. And then this joint business down here, that's given that emphasis. I've gotten so much more out of just messing with coming back here and messing with the page. And um, then I realized I don't have any metadata here. So this was at uh, St. Tim's School. And the date was after I have to go back in my calendar. This was last week. Uh, so that would have been May 17th. Right. <clears throat> There's a little bit of metadata. And um, that's fun. Now, um, I could also put a title on here. And notice that how kind of cool this looks, having some parts of this still just as a pen drawing. There's pen drawing up in here. There's pen drawing here. Then this part here is colored in. Um, so not having, you know, leaving, leaving parts of your, 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 your page in different states of completeness that's that's really neat um are you still dry? no it still needs to dry a little bit so i'm going to let it dry um but let's maybe i can put in a title here um and i'm going to crowdsource this like what is there uh, what for you is the most interesting thing going on the page you could title something like this like a page you could title this sour grass you could title this Oxalis Pescarpi. But sometimes titling something just with the name of what it is is less interesting than if you um, kind of look at sort of, of the ideas here. What for you was the most interesting idea? Um, and so I'm going to crowdsource this. Crowdsource this. Um, the 
Um, are, is, can, if anybody can come up with a cool little title for this, maybe something wrapping around what you think is the most interesting. Bonus points if you can slip a little bad pun into it, throwing down the gauntlet there to y'all. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to add a few other notes. Um, the flowers. Um, so these have oxalic acid in them, which makes them sour. It's the same kind of acid that's in an ant's bite. It's kind of cool. Um, so the parts down here at the bottom, um, uh, the flowers are not very sour. And I need to go back and check them to see if they had any sourness at all. What if I just, usually I just nom nom eat this whole thing. And yes, you can eat the flour. Um, but now, I'm, and if you get a little bit of this, uh, with that sour taste in it, I'm wondering if the petals have no oxalic acid in them. Um, so I'm going to give myself another to-do box. Taste. Petal on own dot 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 um sour so you can do a little ph test with your tongue and um base is very sour be interesting to kind of come up with a way of sort of measuring the amount of oxalic acid in these different parts of it so I'll give myself two to-do boxes here. That's cool. Like out of this, this little Ebbinghaus thing, I now have two little things that I now need to do. See what I'm just by this behavior, I'm making myself more curious. Now, oh, sour gratitude. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, mellow yellow. Ah. Um, give me, give me some. Keep going with this. Keep going with this. Keep going. What else can you can you get me? Oh, um, sour flower power. Oh, alliteration happening. Boom. Oh, keep going. Vote for your your favorite ones in here. Sunshine plant, sour weed patch. Oh, these are fun. See, these this is they're cool. So, give. Give me your 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 uh, put 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 little add hearts to the ones that you you that we you you like the best. Heart hearts. Oh oh and 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 we have. Oh I I I think I need to do tart hearts, Susan. Because see the, the little these little guys are 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 hearts. Um. So what if I write um, and I like to sometimes do this in 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 big block letters so that it kind of stands apart um, from and I'm going to make the a be one of the little petals. Thank you for all the other, no disrespect if I didn't use your idea, but um, I just, I, I had to go with this one. And there's another A, oh good, I get to make another A. H-E-A. R. For some reason, I, I often spell things in my big bold titles wrong. You'd think that would be where you'd be more careful. Don't worry, Jack. It's not just you. Really? Okay. 
So I, I just wanted to do this because then I get to, um, I didn't color any of these in, but now I'm going to have some, some, some fun because I'll let these be green and I'm going to put some of these purple, there are these little purple spots on them see in there. And I was wondering what caused those purple spots. But I have to let that dry in order to do that. And so now it's looking, it's looking like, oh, this was all planned from the beginning. You see, you just, there's so, this whole other kind of page boost that has come from um, from being able to get meta analytical with it. And this, now it's gonna turn white towards its base. As a little shout out to those little joints. And by now, this stuff up here is dry. And I can do a couple of things in there. One is I can add in with my colored pencil, I'm going to draw in some little green lines here. Just so everybody knows what the green lines I was talking about. I don't forget that those were green. And I'm going to write in flowers. There's the little flower power. Let's make this joints a little bit. Hmm. So doesn't that look intentional? Um, and so one thing, so I, you, I, you can think of this in several different ways. One, one is that because I went back and reanalyzed this page, I got a lot more out of it. It got me asking questions that I didn't ask before. Oh, I didn't do any it reminds me ofs. Oh, so the, everybody look down at this. Can you give me some good it reminds me ofs? First up, it reminds me of anything that you see here, any of those, those drawings. Um, oh. Pinwheel, childhood, hearts. Yes, yes, yes. It reminds me, you, you mentioned childhood. I remember eating these when I was a little kid in, oh, what was that ghastly school? Ah, yeah, the, but so I met my, 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 my arch nemesis teacher. Um, it was at Zion Lutheran School. It reminds me of being a kid in Zion Lutheran School. So um, 
reminds me of being, and these were in the the lot out behind. You could pick these through the fence, and everybody said dogs pee on them. Uh, note, they don't. Dogs can pee anywhere they want. Could they pee on these? Hypothetically, yes, but why would they pee, pee on these preferentially over anything else? They don't. Um, uh, so pinwheel, hearts, um, childhood, um, Zion, Lutheran school. Ooh. Um, and, oh yeah, it reminds me of other species of oxalis. Something I didn't look at is sort of note to self um, be interesting to I know like on uh, redwood sorrels the tops and the bottoms of them are really different colors. Um, I should check top and bottom leaf color. This is why like drawing from photographs is not nearly as much fun as like being out there with the real thing because like I want to get out now and like turn over an oxalis and sort of see what is it like on the underside. Um, like uh, the, I know that uh, redwood sorrel, another oxalis, is is very pale on the underside. What about these ones? I don't know. Don't know. Uh, let's throw in some purple spots out here. Um. Oh, somebody's saying it smells garlicky. Probably when I pull them as weeds. Um, so check out to do. Um, check smell. I didn't know that they smelled garlicky. Um, hearts. Um, Susan Beckhart had a really interesting um, to do to add to your list, and that's to have a look at them in the late afternoon or evening. Yeah. Well, that's right. So, to see if they're they're doing that fold down thing. Um. Yeah. To to check. Uh, this one is ending up with lots of to do's. See, this is how um, I, you know, Snoo, Susan and I again. That, I'm sorry, I suggested this a long time ago, and I haven't followed up on it. But I'd really love to 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 kind of get uh, together with you and put together a workshop on going down rabbit holes. This is sort of how a lot of these things start. You notice something that gets you notice something else. You notice something else, and there's all these little potential rabbit holes just from this um, this little little thing. So actually, I need to kind of uh, give myself, um, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to draw. A little rabbit sort of in honor of that thought kind of kind of peeking out over there so many potential rabbit holes wherever we go and um so uh check leaf and uh petal position um am PM and clear cloudy. Oh man, so one, two, three, four, four, four little to do's here. Whew. Goodness. Um, so so that 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 page had some useful stuff on it it just went to 11 though because we um we 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 might 
um, when when we when we get ebbing hasi with our stuff, other things will come out. So I intentionally didn't kind of plan this out where this was going to go. I just knew that like oh I have this page where I was doing some stuff with students and then the bell rang and we had to stop and I got you know cut off and I thought like let's just go play with this. So let's now kind of jump over to I'd love to bring um, uh, y'all in on this um, and kind of get your thoughts about. Um, about kind of this sort of form of of of, of ebbing hossing and and how that and are there other kind of additions sort of post hoc things that we can do um, here again I, I I noticed you know that I didn't have any it reminds me of fun stuff came up when we added that in um, so where do we go with this so actually Susan could I first sort of bounce over to you because when I think of rabbit holes, I do think of you. You. Could I bring you on? There we go. So um, we'd love to kind of get your thoughts on 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 bunny holes um, and this and and this as a tool in that sort of rabbit hole toolkit. Sure. Well, the first thing I'll say is I think in, in the the chat has been going a bit cr crazy here with this this idea of like crowdsourcing journal pages because when we all work together we're all coming up with questions and observations and ideas that somebody else didn't come up with and i was making some suggestions because i was coincidentally having a look at some of probably the same plant that grows under my deck uh in my apartment so i'm gonna go have a snack on it later um <laughs> but uh, yeah i think so so i i, I think this is what this is telling me is, is i should definitely share more journal pages with specifically soliciting like ideas and questions from everybody else because uh then that would be new things to look at for the future but i i i, de I often find this has been the case of when when i go and i observe something in nature and i'm you know i'm, I'm sketching it and i'm, I'm uh, you know i'm looking at things and it's only later afterwards you know i'm kind of you know playing with the journal page and I think all kinds of new things I wish I looked at yeah. or there were just so many things to look at at that place and I didn't have time to see them all and I ended up having to go back and look at them more <laughs> and uh so um uh that's that's so that I have a lot of times where I've like gone out to the same place multiple times specifically like because there were there were aphids in those galls on the sumac and I was trying to sketch them and then a thunderstorm started before I had a chance to do all the investigating I wanted to do and had to go back the next day, look at some more, you know, <laughs> because there's aphids. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and so you, you sort of like, this leads you to this, leads you to this, you to this, but we have to be, do something to, at least for me, I often have to do something intentional to get me to then follow up on things like the little checkoff boxes are are a very useful way of doing that because um we've talked you know we talked before about the uh the zergonic effect uh, when our brain thinks i've got task completion on this then we kind of go on to the next thing but okay. this Sorry. what was the name of that effect i've never heard you call that by name before yeah the zergonic Z zergonic That's zergonic so uh there's a woman named zergonic who did this research i think studying waiters and waitresses who would take orders without writing things down and um, they would have if you talk to them uh in the back room um they would have really good memory of all the things that they were looking at uh or, or i mean all, all all the things that people were ordering until they got the check and then their brains would take all that information and discard it and then they would be on to the next table. Oh, big chat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, um, and so that um, that is now uh, that's that's it's referred to as it's the Zergonic effect. We should. I've, I've talked about this researcher so much. I should try try to track down Zergonic. And find Zergonic and see if we could bring Zergonic in for one of our talks. That would be amazing. 
you soon. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. To, to meet to meet the Zerganik? Wow, that would be. But okay, I'm gonna have to put my little. I'm little so glad to have a name for this because I I I I tell my my students this this I said oh my friend Jack told me about this this phenomenon don't you notice this happens so well, now I have a name to put to it that's great. Um, but I, 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 I'm thinking now I, I should more consciously put little check boxes for myself. Uh, one thing that I noticed that I do when I sometimes I'll go out, I went out to a place um, last week specifically because I knew there's a certain kind of flower that grows there and I really wanted to sketch it and like really work on it because I found it's a very difficult one to sketch. And so I, and, and, uh, excuse me, thank you. <laughs> You know, still. Um, and I wanted to, I wanted to sketch it, and I was finding that that once I had kind of like made a sketch of it, I sort of like kind of checked that box in my brain. Like, okay, well now I've drawn the flower, so now I'm done. Um, and there was a lot more. Like, there were so many cool things to see, but I kind of felt like, okay, I finished this now, and so I ended. I ended up saying, okay, well, listen, okay, like, okay, this was hard to draw, which was part of the thing. I was like, well, I don't want to do it again because it's really hard to get into colors right. It's really difficult. So I made myself draw it from a different angle. I made myself a little closer, and then and then I said, okay, well, now 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 that I've drawn it, I'm still going to draw it again because I'm going to sketch it because I have to get these leaves right. They're so weird. Um, and then of course you got very focused on that, and they realized, well, there's so many other cool things to look at that place. I have to go back to. But um, I think maybe I'll fill up the rest of the page right now with the check boxes because uh, there are so many cool things to investigate that I should that I am remembering that I should go back to probably tomorrow and go check it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, the the purpose of the check box is to intentionally leave an open loop. Right. If you close all your loops, if you close all your circles, you have this feeling of task completion. But we we don't like to have loose ends. So there's something kind of wonderfully unneat and tidy about the empty checkbox. Um, and we want to we want to fill that in. So it's a great way of kind of prompting yourself to 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 do that. And another strategy with this is that if you should check that box off, can you then from what you just learned by checking that box off come up with another question so you still have an open box so it sounds like what we need to do is we need to bring small scraps of paper and a glue stick so that as we check off the boxes and fill up our page we have room to put more check boxes i like this I like that. That. also then we get more pop-ups going in our journals uh, excellent excellent to take advantage of that third dimension i i think and also another thing is is because I, I definitely notice this in myself is that when I have, when I, 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 sometimes I'll go and I'll say, I want to sketch this thing. I want to make a picture of this thing. Um, and I, I want to investigate it. I want to learn about it, but I want to make a picture of it. And so when I have sketched the thing, I'm like, all right, good. Check that box in my brain that I've sketched that thing. Now I'm going to move on and sketch the next thing I want to sketch. But the thing is, it's absolutely worth going and sketching that thing multiple times, multiple angles, looking at it differently. And I think the more that you're having these questions and maybe making some check boxes to look into new things is going to encourage you to look at that thing more because even if you looked at it very closely and found lots of details, there's more that you haven't seen yet that you'll see. And I mean, you could never ever end. You could spend the rest of your life studying that one thing. It is fun to study multiple things, but you know, it's how do how do people ever get bored? How how is that possible? It is. Um, I think we one way that we do get bored is that we we're not deliberately. I think that this takes practice and training. I think that curiosity and vulnerability to what we don't know and to celebrate what we don't know. Like this, the checkbox is another way of celebrating, like, like a big question mark in your journal. It's another way of saying like, I don't know something. And, and but that is a vulnerability. And we really like the subjective feeling of doneness, completeness, having figured it outness, being the person with the answer. But that is boring, and it's wrong, right? 
I think it's also, to be honest, I, I'm saying when I say how to the board, I'm saying that kind of facetiously because I, I, I know, I know, I know. But, 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 yes, but, it, but it, it, it's, I think that engaging your brain in that way, the the act of being curious, the act of investigating, that is, that is, is tiring. And sometimes you're, you're tired mentally, mentally, physically, both. And, or sometimes you're just not really in like a state of mind where you are, you are wanting to do it or you're thinking about other things or whatever. And I definitely noticed this in myself that, and so sometimes I'm just, I'm just tired and I just, I don't, and it takes, takes energy and it takes effort to get to that state of mind where I'm really wanting to investigate things. And sometimes I'm not putting that energy in. And when I do get into that and get into it, then it's really exhilarating and exciting, but you know, it, it also like yeah, your your body still needs to be taken care of too. You need to take care of your physical needs and your mental needs in order to be able to have the, I think the 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 mental energy to be ready to, you know, want to go and be curious and investigate things too. So, it, it's it's not necessarily easy, and it's it takes work, but it's worth. It. Um. Yes. Um, it, and, and that, it, and it is okay also, folks, it is okay sometimes not to be doing that work. Right? But, but uh, you know, Susan's saying that we got to take care of ourselves. It takes a ton of mental energy to be actively curious and doing this stuff. And sometimes, um, you know, for, all that I do to sort of make fun of sitting back and 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 watching some Netflix, um, I do that too. <laughs> it is okay. Um, the uh, give me a good zombie movie and I'm <laughs> gone for the evening. Um, let's 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 bring anybody who's got thoughts, comments, or ideas on this. We'd love to kind of kind of just geek out on this together. Um, uh, Susan, would you mind staying on with us for a little bit? Okay, I'm going to bring on um, Kate Chandler. Um, hey there, Kate. Um, and you're going to add you into the spotlight. Uh, what does this get you thinking yeah. about? How are you doing? Oh, hi, Cricket. Um, as you can see, I love that we know each other's dress. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Well, Cricket doesn't cause quite as much trouble as me, but he definitely finds ways to cause trouble. I mean, Neep really sets the bar quite high for that. I mean, I don't know if you were in Pencil Miles earlier and heard about her list of crimes just from today of uh, knocking over the container of uh, ox gall all over my desk. And um, what else does Neep do? Of all the gall. Yeah, I know, right? Neep's had a lot of crimes. Your paint, your paint will never dry again, or it will dry more quickly, or one, one of those. Well, that one is actually for making watercolor pigments spread out more. Like, if you have a right. wet and down paper, and then you put that down, it just goes, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Um, luckily, I mean, I can get another bottle, but darn it, Neep. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's not as bad as her other crime, um, where she stole my car keys, because they have a little stuffed animal gator attached to my car keys. And I knew that I couldn't have lost that somewhere else because I don't know how I would have gotten home without it. But it went missing for about two weeks. So I'd use my like emergency car key. And on Mother's Day, who do I see sauntering across my room carrying the little gator with the key? I'm like, oh, you have it. You stole it. Well, oh, I just so, found this. Yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how it got under the couch. You know, she has two little deposits where she hides her stolen treasures um, under my bed and in her little REI cat tent. Um, yeah, so I have to clean those out regularly. I found such important things like my passport, knives, various pens and pencils, um, my car keys, and a few other things. The, the cap to the ox gall? Well, no, she just knocked it over. I hadn't yeah. tightened it down enough so it's spilled, but yeah, what a cat. Anyways, what I was going to say about the, like, sort of exhaustion and whatnot, that's actually been a big challenge for me lately, because I've been working, I've got all kinds of commitments and whatnot, like, right now I'm actually in two places, and uh, people really kind of pushed my boundaries on what I was saying, like, this is what I can handle right now, um, 
And so I am stretched a little bit thin and I'm realizing that I need to kind of cut back and set myself up for success because I realize like with working full-time or almost full-time, it's really hard to put in the energy to really like grow and invest in like education stuff. And I've actually, I mean, one of the ELP body classes, I ended up just sort of dropping out because I could not summon the mental energy to sit down at the computer after, you know, for another six hours or so to watch these like classes after doing that for 10 hours straight each day and I, I just didn't have it in me and I felt really bad but also I mean there is only so much you can really push your brain to do and um in the last year I realized I had a ADHD and autism brain which is really great in a lot of ways it just doesn't really work necessarily well with a lot of things that are expected of people in the 21st century, like the whole thing of sitting down in front of your computer for hours of the day for work. And that's not really something that I can sustainably do. And so I'm looking like, okay, how do I shift into doing something where I have a lot more control of my workflow and can manage how much socialization and the timeline, all kinds of stuff. So I am kind of looking at how I'm going to, uh, give myself more time to really work on that and kind of establish doing my own thing. And I think the best way to do that might actually be going back to California for a while and hanging out with my parents and um, hopefully trying to maybe do some shadowing for that CSUMD program and see if that's something that I can really feasibly do, or even if not, just finding some of the resources down there. And yeah. It's just hard to kind of have so many things going and having to support yourself and all that and also try and build a different educational career. Um, so, yeah, that's fun. It, it, it is really hard to take care of ourselves. So that we're feeling this pressure, like, should be doing all these different things. Oh, absolutely. I mean... It's so hard even just to like consistently keep myself fed because I feel like there's other things that demand my time more. And so, and that's a big thing for keeping your brain in healthy functioning condition. And that's something that I regularly fail to do. And I just feel like I'm really not being good to, uh, to myself. And I need to figure out how to make that work. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, so, okay. Sorry, Susan. Yes. Oh, I was just gonna say I I I I understand that it's it's um sometimes even when there's things that you really really want to do, um mm -hmm. but it still ends up you know kind of demanding more more of your time and more of your energy than than you have, uh, and, and I have things that you know where I, I end up kind of asking more of myself than what I what I what's actually making me happy to to do and. <laughs> You know, it's it's. I, I want to be nature journaling all the time, and knitting all the time, and doing pottery all the time, and doing math with fun students who ask me questions all the time. Um, mm -hmm. I don't get to do that. I have to do the boring parts, and even and even the parts that I really want to do, I just I don't have the energy to do it all the time. It's frustrating, and I think yeah, I, it's really good to that you're sort of listening to your. Your, your body and your mind and, and kind of figuring out how to how, how to kind of how to kind of get yourself in, in in a state where you can do those things that you want and enjoy it and and also you know feed yourself in this society that demands yeah. that we do things we don't enjoy in order to feed ourselves and right uh, yeah no that part sucks and it's just hard to say once I hit that burnout point last year like I just you know I took about a year off basically I mean I take it off completely. I was definitely very heavily invested in trying to establish some artistic stuff, but um, which I'm really happy about. But also, I burned myself out so hard after just pushing really hard with academics and kind of having a very toxic attitude towards my success with that. And now, whenever I start stacking things on, my brain kind of freezes up and goes, "No, don't do that again. We need to stop." And kind of goes into panic mode as soon as you start getting overwhelmed. So that's kind of fun and I'm kind of realizing that with you know career building and stuff like that 
I don't want to get stuck into this position where I'm like making very slow headway on the things I want to be doing. And so I think I need to make some big changes to kind of really force myself into that growth mindset again, instead of being in the like stagnant area. Yeah. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. We'll see what goes on with that. Um, Should you come back to California, we need to go play. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. Some, some, some that would be really there. great. And you, you're down in the Monterey area, is that right? Yeah, that's where my parents are. They're in uh, San Juan Batista, which is about 30 miles in. Yeah. 30, miles. 30 minutes inland or 30 miles. I don't know. It's one of those uses of measurement. Um, <laughs> uh, I would have to check on that. But basically, it's a really easy hour and a half two hour drive up to the bay area and about half an hour to monterey or santa cruz great so um, yeah the, the um i i love that program they've got at cal state monterey bay i'm actually going to go down to there next week and uh talk to all the 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 uh, grads in the program there yeah they just did their big exhibit at pg museum didn't they yeah yeah so that's gonna be fun so we'll see. That's kind of the goal. I just don't know if they would take me with like where I am with my education right now and that history and um yeah, that we, funny way to fund it. But you so maybe we can start a GoFundMe page for this. It'd be worth it. Yeah. It, yeah, I'm gonna try and get more content going like with the YouTube channel and stuff like that. So it feels like there's a little bit more momentum behind it. Um but that's another thing that, like, you know, we need time and energy to dedicate towards. And I'd like to do some stuff like, um, I really enjoy the kind of scientific uh, curiosity relationship like I have with uh, Parker Gibbons, the herpetologist. And I would love to start doing some more videos with him, especially as, like, we have a field guy that we want to um, work on together. And I'm still trying to, like, develop a style for salamanders where they look like real well I don't know salamanders they very easily look very cartoonish and I'm trying to figure out how to like stylize them in a way that feels right for that what we're publishing but I'd love to kind of build on that and I mean there's so many things I'd like to do that would really kind of push me towards those goals and I'm just realizing with my current setup I do not have the energy to like push towards that so I think I need to make some big changes to get back on that track and I think that CSUMB program could really launch me into um a whole new level of you know nature that, journal that's what it did for me I, I needed something just to kind of kick me in the pants and also to kind of give me it's sort of like we were talking earlier about sort of a certification saying the other part about yeah. education you're a nature journal educator is that we all have this imposter syndrome and mm -hmm. You know, I was saying to myself, I'm not an illustrator. I just teach classes on how to draw. But then I took the science illustration program. I'm now an illustrator. Right? So <laughs> well, um, why? Right. Because because I've got this piece of paper. Look, it says illustrator. And can, you, yeah. can I ask? Can I ask you? Yeah. Do you, do you find it harder or feel more pressure now that you've got a piece of paper that officially certifies that you're an illustrator? Because um, no, I've had I sometimes the imposter syndrome is worse for me in a thing where I'm supposed to be the expert. And it's like, yes, I actually do have more expertise now, but I also feel like I feel the pressure a lot more when there's things I'm not supposed to be an expert on. I'm like, I feel a lot more comfortable making mistakes on it because no one's expecting me to be correct on it. The, I, I think that maybe in the illustrator field, it's a little bit easier because, um, there's, like the, the the worst you're going to do is like you're going to mispronounce gouache. <laughs> you're, you're not performing open heart surgery, so you don't have to yeah, worry about that, that. that. That's right. Like the stakes, the the stakes are are, are low. But 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 yeah, the, the imposter syndrome is still there for me. Um, but it's but I can now kind of hang my hat on the illustrator peg a little bit more comfortably. Um, right. I, I I jump through that hoop. Um, for me, it the, seems the, like it'd be more of a just intensive like skill building workshop on like really how to approach some of the really challenging stuff and yeah. I mean my main resources I've used right that's actually really helpful science illustration and every other field has just been your video 
archive. Um, that's been the best resource. Um, awesome. Yeah. It's, I think um, it's, def it's definitely an area where the, the, the very, very best, I mean, like having all these resources to help you improve faster is great, but, 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 the, but the, the main thing you have to do is you just have to go and do illustrations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like, if, if, yeah, if you, if you want to learn, if you want to learn history, you can't just sit there and think about history. You know, like there, there's some kind of, there, you, you, there's like, there is a certain amount of like, you I need to understand the body of work that has been studied before. Yeah. Where, whereas with, I, I would partially disagree and be like, that is a great well, way that's a good point. you think history about it, you are immediately going to want to have an answer to something and you're going to start looking for it. So I'd say thinking about history is a great way to get into history. Well, sure, sure. But I, I think, but, yeah, is, but I get that, point. that it does require like going and reading something someone has written. And obviously primary sources would be the ideal yeah. thing if you always have that. Uh, you know, but yeah. I think, yeah, you know, it's de definitely something where the illustration is like, you know, I mean, I, if, if all you were doing was sitting watching cat videos, you would learn a certain amount, but you wouldn't have to do the, the, the work. Yeah. I find that, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of things I, you know, I, I can watch a video on watercolor technique and then maybe be able to implement it the first try, but more likely I need to then actually sit down and engage with that and actually see how that works in practice and and again yeah. improve my skills you know by by doing it i think which i think is you know obviously which as you're flipping through pages here you are obviously doing yeah i was gonna say like the yeah. last one i did i'm trying to get back to how it was like doing more of the studies is i think you guys probably remember from when i do my intensive sketchbook so i decided that it's time to learn how to draw butterflies because i've really struggled with patterns and symmetry yeah. So I watched one of Jack's uh, videos and I have just been doing butterflies and gouache and I just got this really sort of cheap flimsy sketchbook thing. It's got enough, just enough yeah. quality to not fall apart on me. And I've just been doing tons and tons of gouache butterflies trying to- Some non-dead butterflies. Out. Yeah, well, I mean- Not that dead butterflies are bad. But still. No, but I think it's more fun to draw non-dead butterflies. So I just put on iNaturalist and I look up butterfly and I'm going to work on doing the more dynamic poses, but I'm kind of trying to learn the anatomy and really how to copy down those patterns nicely. There's some little sketch pages. Nice. Um, understanding but, those yeah. veins and how things wrap around those veins is big. Yeah. I, I have definitely found for a lot of butterflies that have very complicated like spot patterns and things, Mm -hmm. Giving giving the veins even approximately right first seems to be the key for me to then getting the spots to all end up in the right because they're yeah. all in specific places either between or on the veins and all the lines yeah. all go you know and so if you can get the veins right first map, even approximately then everything else kind of falls out from that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's great the um I understand, uh, Vea was telling me that a whole cluster of you folks are now geeking out on butterflies together. Yeah, yeah, we're working uh, on that. So I on, on that butterfly project? Okay, to, to, to switch on, okay. add Vea in here. So what, what you all been doing with the, 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 the flutterbys? Um, so, well, yeah. I, oh, I texted Vea and I forget what the context of it was. And we were discussing the butterflies along with some other stuff. And then I said we should do a challenge to try and draw butterflies every day to some degree and share those. And then I think maybe I reached out to Susan and we need to kind of conglomerate this into some sort of butterfly group chat or something like that um, to just compound the chaos. But yeah, it's kind of nice. You want to... reference photos. I can give you more reference photos than you can take a stick out. Oh. <laughs> I, I, have to dig yeah. through. <laughs> the, I never delete any photos and so there, there are quite, quite awesome. but yeah same so if anybody else wants to join the butterfly challenge we're collecting a kaleidoscope of us to do this yeah it is it is open to anyone it, who is that the collective term for butterflies it is now there's kaleidoscope there's <laughs> flutter there's a few others but i like that it's a kaleidoscope a kaleidoscope so you're getting a kaleidoscope of people together that's good now can can we invite can we invite the non butterfly moths in? Of course. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Flip it up. the one that's the lunar moth that's really spectacular. I think I need to draw some of those. Yes, they're excellent. Yeah, so my friend Parker. 
posted some of those on Instagram. Oh, you are having too much That's fun nice. out there in the South. That's great. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, um, so my approach, um, and maybe I can do a little uh, demo for this on, on one of our little workshops. But I, when I was working on my butterflies for my field guide, I really liked using uh, uh, coquille board. So I did them on coquille board, which is this hmm. textured pebbly surface board. And I would draw my picture on it. And then I would um, put watercolor over that and let it dry completely. And then I could hit that with colored pencil on top of it. And the texture of the coquille board kind of gave you the little sort of the little micro scale effect of the wings. Getting your, lep getting your lepids on your lepidoptera. <laughs> that, that's right. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, that's awesome. really snipey. So I might do a little, that might be a, 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 a fun one to, to that little approach to share with you. Um, this is great. Yeah. I, I love that uh, this little butterfly sketching team has emerged. Um, right. And I you're kind I'm... of crowdsourcing each other for sort of best practices and ideas in how to do this. I, I should note in relation to butterflies is that uh, July 1st is National Butterfly Count Day, oh, uh, awesome. which I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm going to attend a training because our Albany Pine Bush, of course, they always, whenever there's a cool community science thing, there's always any. So there, we'll have a training on that. And I'll know more about that, but I, I don't know if you have to be part of a group to do it or what, but go look up National Butterfly Count on July 1st and see if it's okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know anything more right now, but I'm thinking, I'm sure there's a website for it and uh, we'll find out. That's great. We, yeah. we should check that out. <laughs> um, and, and as, as folks are probably aware, worldwide, um, people are just discovering right now that there's this incredible insect crash going on. And um, so keeping track of insects through citizen scientists, science particularly important. Um, losing some birds is tragic because I love me some birds. Um, losing insects that we're aware of means that those are insects that are abundant enough that they actually kind of came to our awareness and they're going out that is we don't know which ones we don't know about that's right yeah the unknown unknowns <laughs> there's a lot of those insects that's that's crazy um, uh, Avea, you held up that journal just a moment ago oh yeah I think you could show us some of that 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 again i'm going to close down all our screen so we can make that a little bit bigger because that looked like some just some hardcore good geeking out uh, sure thing. um so my butterfly obsession already had started with, of course, the Xerxes. And so then, um, in addition to the birds, I've been trying to draw, um, I've been trying to make a guide for insects for myself. And I'm planning to do full pages in using this journal that Susan got me. And I just thought I'd start out with drawing the Lepidopterans. The way I did this is that I went onto iNaturalist and made a bounding box on the area where I do my restoration work, and then looked up the species listed um, that were under Lepidoptera. And so I found these ones, drew them small because I want to practice my field sketching when I don't have time to sit and draw a huge butterfly. And the hard part for me is getting all of these minute little um, details. And I'm thinking that's not really practical if I'm seeing just kind of flutter by, but I'm going to figure that out. So I started with that, um, practiced like first putting down a base coat of paint and then adding the details using either um, black pen or in some cases pencil. Then um, I kind of went on, it might take me a moment. Um, um, hang on, um, goose. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna use this because this is easier than having to lean back. Um, Jalen's racism. Oh, wait, here. Okay, good, yes, found it, found it, found it. Here. Um, mm. butterflies. So starting out drawing them in different angles with the foreshortening, this one is where I start to play with how the patterns are. This one looked like an intermediately difficult pattern. This one is 
was challenging at first, but it's one of the easier ones. And I've got to turn that blue. So ignore that. This was from your video, Jack. Um, so uh, I, I think that you've got the, 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 the wing that is foreshortened that is close to you. You, um, it's super easy for us to make the wing tip as sharply pointed as the one that is not foreshortened, but that, that foreshortening is really going to blunt and round that little wing tip. So that's really cool. Thank you. And then it's also fun with like the dots that the dots also get foreshortened and they turn more into ovals when it's the mm -hmm. one, which is the circle. Um, and so I was trying to work out how to do these patterns and I might have to go back with a pencil. Um, I was trying to draw the veins of this one before I drew it in. This was from a, a book of a Xerxes book. And so I drew the veins based off of what I could observe. Um, and then, oh, sorry. And then I was lucky. I got, um, there were the veins that you'd done in your book. So I looked at those um, in, in your how to um, draw and nature journal. And so I drew those out. And then the hard part was seeing if I could see all of these veins wow. when I was looking at the others. Um, Luffy friend right here, um, just for funsies. I think that's a silvery blue. Um, I love the, you know, the foreshortened spots there again. Those little ovals there on that wing that's kind of turning towards you. Ah, that's cool. But, but, but hold your book up a little bit higher. Look at this crazy guy. Gow, wonderful little thing. That's got so much depth going on. And did you... The, the wing on the, that I'm seeing on the left-hand side, the lighter one, hind wing, showing the veins by um, darkening what's, did you draw over that in a light pencil or did you work around that? I just water? happened to work. I just happened to work around it with watercolor. There'd been a base coat already um, underneath it um, <laughs> because I painted it in layers. So I put a layer underneath it and then I painted over it with darker colors um, using the watercolor. Um, so oh, that this way is just so lovingly observed. Thank you. And and I found out that drawing the if I'm trying to do a careful drawing, then finding out then drawing the veins um helps a little bit more. Um so I tried to do that on this one, um, using what I could observe. And this one was difficult because a lot of the pattern was obscured. And so then I realized that I'd actually gotten this sort of wrong. And I drew it again over here, but then I painted over it because it was really smudgy. And so trying to figure out, like yeah. having the different, having the veins coming off of the discal cell is helpful because then you can pace out exactly where each of the patterns goes in. And so lots of counting and seeing how many, like how many ruffles there are and then where the vein goes down into the middle of the ruffle instead of some of the other places. And so I'm trying to figure out the order of yeah. operations. I've been trying to figure that out for a while. and. Um, then how to do detail work and which brown is going to be the most appropriate. Um, realizing that if I'm having trouble seeing the veins, I could look at the back instead. This is later on, I'm going to draw the swing completely and um, see if I can get it better. And then um, I'm beginning to make a page full of blues. Um, so that, that way I can learn my blues a little bit better. There's five currently in the Presidio. So I've got I've got three more to add because I'm going to add Xerxes at the end like I tend to do. Um, yeah, your little friend. Yep. And so um, and Cersei's blue is your Patronus. Yes, it is. The beautiful Patronus. Um, and so um, what I have to go back and do now is I have to add the textures on, on the ridges. So I have to count the ridges and then add the edges properly and then um, and then block in. So so right now, the hardest part really is this order of operations and trying what to figure out what to do. rabbit hole on this. This is really fun. What a rabbit hole. This work is not in vain. Thank you. Can I jump in with, 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 with a question for, for both of you, Gorgeous Pot? Because one thing I've struggled with with blues, that mm -hmm. blue is so iridescent and shiny, but iridescence it seems like is easiest to make it look iridescent when either you can see it moving, so you can see how the color changes, which is hard to do on a piece of paper, or when it's curved, like you, you, you've looked at like the, the head of a duck, for instance, the head of a mallard, and you can see where that that very strong color goes very quickly to black. And that's what makes it look iridescent. I've really struggled with, with, with blues because the trouble is, is the wing is fairly flat. I mean, there's a bit of sort of, as you say, rippling in between the, vein, the veins, but it's sort of like, if you're looking at it straight on, it's very bright blue. If you're looking at an angle, it's a different color of blue. 
But the only way that it looks iridescent is that you start seeing the butterfly move and the colors change as it moves. So any thoughts on how to, how to capture that? A, a little line pointing to it that says iridescent. <laughs> ah, that's that's a good picture. I think also you if you have you have your wings, you know, they're usually not held out totally flat. And so you're gonna have a different color on the one that's at a different angle. But yeah. that, that that is really, really challenging. Mm -hmm. Um, the sometimes a um, over dry watercolor, a little bit of colored pencil coming in to add just a few hints of these other kind of hints of colors, and um, is a is a is a good hack for that. But uh, that is a really challenging thing. What would you have there? Sometimes playing with the um with the ple um the pleats can can help as well. This was this was a page from about a year ago. Um I'm not actually going to do this anymore, but at the time I was like maybe I'll get myself a Xerxes tattoo. And so I was trying to draw Xerxes. Um the wings are a bit weird here. The wings are better here, but I wanted more of the blue. Um and then this was just me trying to get the patterns down and everything and so just all sorts of angles of the wings and then the Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Please, I, I interrupt. Please go on. I was gonna say, and then, and then later on after this, I went to um to the Academy of Sciences where they have Xerxes currently on display, and actually got to draw what the wings look like, um, with the patterns and stuff. But um, but yeah, um, I'm with you, Susan, about that. But I was thinking that I was trying to see if I had any drawings on my page where the the shininess worked, and I realized that I liked this one the best because I emphasized some of the pleats, um, so or. And this is about a year ago? Um, yes, this was in September 2021. Check out the result of your pencil miles. Just mm -hmm. the way you are seeing these structures, then really you're making great observations. Now it's it's they're 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 jumping off the page. Yes. <laughs> Pencil mm -hmm. miles. Oh, yes. <laughs> well done. Well done. Thank you. Uh, this is that's really exciting to see. I, I love this 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 butterfly drawing. Um, but like if again, there are these 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 moments in history when you know you you had all the impressionists, all these artists got together and they were like talking to each other and sipping coffee in cafes and then going off and painting and looking at each other's stuff and they all kind of moved each other's work forward and because of that cross fertilization and the more that we encourage that the more that we live that kind of helping each other supporting each other doing these things our, ourselves within this community the more this this whole crazy wagon is going to just you know bump down the road and you know figure out roads that we didn't even know were there and then go off the road and and uh, leave the wagon behind and tread lightly and just this our, our brains are just going to blink just awesome growth mindset awesome growth mindset there Ooh. and on that we should wrap wrap for today um folks the impact of just like do it again, do it again, do it again. But what what motivates you to do that? It's love and joy and curiosity, right? And that's that's why we do it. So you're not there just like slugging away, right? But you're like, oh, I love these these things, and that, um, and our sort of approach in the community community can really help ourselves and other people sort of dive in like that. Thank you folks so much for sharing. Thank you, Jack. This was lovely. Hey, lovely to be with all of you today. Thank you for being here. Avea, thank you so much for helping me um, wrangle and work these uh, workshops. I really appreciate it. Um, folks should also know that behind the scenes, Avea is also doing all the video processing to present these on, 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 on YouTube or my website. Um, really, really grateful for that. That's, that's, incredible and um and, and and this stuff would be accessible if it weren't for you thank you take care everybody have a really good day i'm about to go 
teach science in my daughter's school. So uh, with the eighth graders today, they're this wonderful group of kids. They're, we have really fun discussions. And we're going to be getting into some crazy stuff today. So I have to scamper along and do that. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Bye, Jeff. everybody. Oh. Well, mine was kind of an oval there. I need to kind of get the, the top down coming down on my little heart. There, there you go. You've got a good one.